Welcome everyone. I'm Sherry Weiss, artist working for you guys for the Adrian Art Center's new program, The Art of Making. This program is an exciting new program for all of you to be able to um, get online and do things at home in order to increase, increase your creative um, pursuits and abilities. And today we're going to be creating a planter that you can make just from found objects in your home, recycled objects in your home, and then that planter, that hanging planter, you can go ahead and put some really um, beautiful seeds in there so that you can start your own little herb garden if you don't already have one. Now, even if you don't have an indoor, um, an outdoor area, you can always have your hanging planter indoors. This particular session is for all age groups, so that means as young as possible to as old as possible, as long as they're not young enough to you know, be eating paint or doing anything that would be dangerous for them. We are going to need um, to use scissors and um, so a knife for just a small portion of the, the tutorial. So that section you definitely want to monitor the younger children for. And the painting, you want to monitor those younger children who haven't learned how to not put things in their mouth yet. Um, but aside from that, it's for, for all ages. Um, so what I want you all to go ahead and do first is I'd like you to go and walk around your house, go to your recycling bin, and look for items that you could use to turn it into a planter. Now, ideally, it would be made out of plastic because it's easier to cut, and plus we want to recycle those used plastic containers. This one right here is a container that's from like um, from the grocery store, chopped up fruit container, and I happen to have quite a few of these so I'm going to show you using these the planter we're going to do a three-tiered hanging planter with this one and you can also use like these kinds of containers this is really nice this would be a nice hanging planter also you can even use an old um, detergent bottle and I'll show you how we're gonna cut that in half and then you can use this for the planter as well um, soda bottles are great you can cut those in half and use the soda bottles for that as well. Water bottles work too. They're just gonna be a little bit smaller, so you just wanna keep that in mind. Um, another thing, you can also use aluminum cans for those canned goods, but it is a little bit harder to cut into, so just keep that in mind. So go ahead and grab your found or recycled item that you're going to use for your planter. And once you're done with that, we're going to go ahead and poke some holes in it to get it prepared for when we're going to first layer. We'll paint another layer, depending on whatever you choose to do in terms of color and design. Then we wait for that to dry. We install the, the strings and build the entire thing. And then we fill it up with soil and our seeds. So we're going to go ahead and get started with putting the holes inside of the plastic. If you have something like this, that works too, or something like this. Either way, it doesn't matter, even if you're using something like this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one so I can show you really quickly the options that you have. So children should not be doing this. Young children don't really want the adults to do this. But aside from that, it's completely safe. So you could use both of these sides as a planter. You can do it this way, or you can go ahead and hang it this way, which I'll show you also. So whichever one you're using, whether it be something like this, or something like this, or something like this, whichever side, you're going to poke holes, four holes, evenly along the surface. So in this case, you would want to put the holes, you can mark them first if you would like, here, 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 and here. Okay, so for example, this one, you would put here, 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 and here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but generally you want to have it even so that when it hangs, it doesn't have one end looser than the other. So same with this kind of, Just a little bit of water, make sure to rinse it clean first. So here, I'm gonna put one here, and here, and here, and here. Okay, so four, and then this one can be marked on these edges here, and here, and here, and here. Okay. So, 
If you're using these or these, either way, you've got to have those four. And you're going to go ahead and choose as many tiers as you would like. I wouldn't go more than four tiers. Just it, it depends. If you want a very long hanging planter, you can do that also. But if you have a three-tiered one, that would probably be about this height. Okay. So I'm going to put my marks on all of my tiers. These are the three tiers that I'm going to use. And I'm going to get either a knife, and this part you have to have parents to help if you're, you know, if you're not allowed to use the knives. A knife or an exacto knife or a scissor also works. Either way, it just has to be sharp. And you're going to go ahead and just create a little hole on the bottom where you marked it. Be careful. Don't want to hurt yourself. So I'm going to get a hole in the center, right here in the middle, okay? Only the top two. You don't need it for the bottom. But if you want to you want to go ahead and put a little hole for drainage, you can go ahead and do that too. So I'm gonna put that. A little hole for drainage for my tears. Now these, when you paint them, plastic, when you paint plastic, if you don't make the surface rough, the paint won't stick. So if you do want these to be for outdoor, you definitely want to sand the surface of them if you want to use them for outdoor. Now if you don't have sandpaper, and that's fine, and you want to go ahead and continue with the project, that's fine too, but just keep in mind that you don't want to have it outdoor where the paint will eventually come off of the plastic because of the elements. So you would want to keep it indoors instead. And when you water it, just try to do like top watering so that the water doesn't get onto the plastic. But you definitely want to try to sand it if you have that available so that you can put it outside. So I'm going to go ahead and just sand the surface of the plastic just a little bit so that the paint sticks. After every single piece, if you don't have sandpaper, you can also just grab the, the piece and go somewhere with a rough surface. So, like sidewalk or street, or maybe even um, if you have like some rocks or something outside, and it's not ideal. I mean, of course, the sandpaper does work better, but it does help make the surface um, rough so that at least the paint will stick. I'm going to do that on all edges, not on the inside. I'm not going to worry about the inside because I'm not going to paint the inside as that's going to have um, the plant and the soil inside of it. Okay, now that my plastic is all sanded, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off first to make sure I don't have any particles with a damp cloth. And then I'm drying it so that it's dry for the paint. Now I've chosen my base color. That's the first color that I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it the same color for all three tiers, but that's up to you. This is where you guys get to be creative. You get to decide what colors you want. Whatever paint you have around the house would work. Even nail polish, like even nail polish would work. House paint, like wall house paint would work as well. Um, and if you don't have any, make your own colors by mixing. So you could try getting a little bit of paint and mixing with another color. The primaries, red, blue, and yellow, we can use to mix to make a variety of colors. So red and blue, you've got purple. Blue and yellow, you've got green. Yellow and red, you've got orange. And with all of those, you can do a variety of things. So I'm gonna keep one particular color for all of the base pieces because I'm going to go for an ocean theme as I am missing seeing the ocean very much but you can do different colors, as I said before. So we're gonna go ahead and paint that, paint all parts of it, except for the inside. You don't have to paint the inside as that's where your soil will be. So you don't have to worry about painting the inside. Make sure it's nice and coated. Remember that the exterior paint would be the best paint to use for outdoor, but interior paint on these kind of surfaces are okay. I mean, it wouldn't last as long, but the exterior paint is the best bet. 
these little samples from um, these stores, these paint stores, also are pretty cheap and inexpensive. There's quite a few stores out there that you can find some good exterior paint for quite inexpensively. But again, there's probably some stuff you've got around the house. Or you know what you can also do is you use one of the paint colors as the base coat and then you can use like nail polish for the decorations afterward to do little decorative things. So that's another idea for you all. Oh, I love this color. It's so nice. It's like a beautiful aqua, like the shallow part of the ocean. And you're not only doing something beautiful for your home by creating something like this, but you're also doing something good for the environment as you're reusing these plastic materials. Okay. I don't need to paint the top because as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and do that little lip right over there. All right, so now we've got at least our first coat and we're gonna go ahead and we can do a second coat to make that even, but we're gonna just flip it over like here so that it dries. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in some water to make sure that we don't get our brushes dried out. And when you do put your brushes in water, just when you're done with the project, make sure that you clean your brushes so that they last nice and long. Now that the uh, base coats are dry, I did apply a second coat on these and let them dry. Now that they're dry, we can go ahead and begin the next step. We are going to poke a couple more holes in them. So if you look at <clears throat> where the holes are on the bottom, you're going to match those here on this edge right there. Making sure to be careful. Okay, so as you can see, you have a hole here matching to this end. And do that for all of your pieces. Be careful with your hands. Don't want to get hurt. Okay, so right now you should have a total of nine holes. Four, one, two, three, four, one in the middle, and then four on the top ends matching the bottom. Okay? So like that, and along the edge. Now we're going to decorate our planters. This is the really like the most fun part. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it with another two colors. I'm going to keep with this whole sort of beach ocean theme and I'm going to use a darker aqua color. Again, you can use and do whatever decoration you would like. If you want to do like a, a outdoor scene where you have blue and then maybe some white clouds or if you want to draw an airplane on there. I mean, it's, it's entirely up to you the way that you want to decorate these. But I'm going to keep with the ocean theme and I'm going to make some little sort of decorative petal scales along the entire thing. Just keep re-dipping until I do that. Again, you can use any kind of paint, wall paint, exterior paint, nail polish, maybe model car paint. If you want it to last outside though, you want to do the exterior. So right now I'm just making little loops, kind of like little petals along the bottom. I'm going to make some more of those. You could also draw all of this first if you would like, so you can get a pencil or a marker and draw everything before you paint it. That's definitely an option. It's entirely up to you. I like, I think it's important with art to have freedom and to try different things to see what works. So you could draw first and then paint after use a pencil or a marker. And my last little wave. Because it's ocean theme, I'm gonna go ahead and, and scallop it. So I'm gonna create scalloped seashell shapes. And this particular thing happens to be sort of shaped that way already. So it does have that little bit of a shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and create little seashell shapes. And afterward, I'll add cute little decorations to make my seashells look nice. Okay, 
I'm going to give that a minute just to dry before I start adding all of the other stuff that I'm going to add to it. And then after that, we'll go ahead and start hanging it up. Okay, so now that we have another coat dry, we're going to add a little bit more decorations. I'm going to add some decorative stuff to my seashells. I've got a different brush, a thinner brush this time. That way I can get some finer lines, but you know, depending on what you're doing is what you use. And my last one. I've got little seashells all along the planter. Very nice, very nice. This one I'm going to add I'm doing this color first and then I'm going to go ahead and do the orange afterwards. So step by step and in layers. This one I'm going to do some cute little extra scales just to add to it. And also polka dots. I love polka dots. The next one. Just adding a little bit of decoration, making my planter look beautiful. If you don't have brushes, you can also use a paper towel to do the base coat. So if you dip the paint in paper towel to base coat, and you can use your fingers for decoration and for adding nice fun stuff. And I'm just going to add a couple more decorative elements to it. I wonder what you're doing at home, how you're decorating your pieces. I would really like to see, and actually if you guys go on to Instagram at the Arch Center, you could see what other things are going on, what other classes are available to you. And so my waves are ready. I'm gonna let those dry. Now I'm not gonna add any more decoration to these three. I think they're pretty much good to go, but you're welcome at home to do whatever you like with your planters so that they feel ready and done for you. Okay, so now that these are dry and they have their holes on them, we're going to get the string so that we can hang them up and create a hanging, recycled, found art on your planter. So you're gonna go ahead and you can get some string or yarn or rope, um, anything that would be thin enough to put through these holes, but thick enough to hold it up. And you're going to cut, depending on the size of the container, but in general, you're probably gonna, so about a three foot piece, at least for these. And you're going to need two strings for each planter because you cut two holes on each end. So we're going to do two strings per planter. So I've already cut a couple here. I already have a few cut, so you can go ahead and cut your own. This one's a little bit too long. We're going to decide which piece is going to be the base, meaning it's the, the last final piece. And I'm going to go ahead and get the scallops little seashells are going to be the last base piece I'm going to get one of my strings divide it in half and then on one side of the planter this side of the planter I'm going to pull the string through here through one of the holes I've got this little 
happen to have this little tool, but you don't need the tool. You can use a pencil or anything to help you pull those through. So on this side, you're going to put the string from the outside, the base outside. Okay. Same here. So that you're going to see that it's going to come out through here like this. And then these pieces are going to go through here. Okay. And then this is going to go through here. So you've got two pieces like that, and you're going to do the same for the other side. See, that way it's not um, covering the decoration. Get your other string and do the same. You come from the bottom base. You can also pull the strings through this way. That works too if your holes are big enough. It just depends on how you made them and the condition of the string. You just want to make sure it's even, and then you're going to pull it through here so that it goes to the outside of the container. All right, and it's pretty even. Then you're going to get the two strings, the string that is the same one, so the same string, and you're just going to bring them together and not quite all the way at the end. You want to leave a couple inches, two, three inches. You're just going to tie them in a knot like this. Okay, so you're going to tie them in a knot. Okay, and you're going to do the same with the other side. So bring the two ends together and you're going to tie them in a knot, leaving about two or three inches from the top. Okay. So far. Then you're going to do the same for these other pieces, for your other pieces, whether they have been were in this container, this container, either way. If you're doing um, one of these bits all together, the base, which is this one right here, we're going to leave that here at the base. We're going to bring the two strings together and try to make them as even as possible. You're going to bring one through, one set of strings through whichever is going to be your middle layer. I'm going to make actually this one my middle layer. So I'm going to put the strings through here in the middle. One set. Okay, so put straight down. Make sure that they're as even as possible. And then you're going to tie a knot. joining both sets of strings together. So all four strings are now going to be knotted together. So then once you go like this, you have your one hanging set so far, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the other one up top. Okay. So now we're going to get both of these here. All right, we're going to join them. 
because they're going to come through this piece right here. Starting with one of them, put one set, the two strings through, and then get the other string here and put that through. So now you have both sets of strings here, okay? And you can just pull them all the way through as much as you can. That way you even it out and let this kind of lie in here. So if you just let it lie in here and then pull the strings through, it'll help you even everything out. And now you're going to grab both of the strings again and you're going to do two knots. So one knot together, this part maybe for the younger children might be a little hard so you're going to have to have maybe some adults help with that, just so it's thicker so that that way it doesn't go through the hole that will be holding it up. Okay. And now I'm ready to pull that through. And now we have a three-tier planter. Okay, so for the top piece, we're going to even out the strings as much as possible as well. So once you have this here like that, you can go ahead and you can hang it on whatever you would like. So I have here something that you can hang it on so you can just see how it works. And now you've got your little planter. You can also paint the strings if you would like, which I am going to go ahead and do because I would like for it to look a little bit better. And I'm also going to show you how to put the soil and um, the seeds in there as well so that you have a fully functioning planter. I'm not going to paint the strings right now with you all. You can go ahead and do that um, if you would like to, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you how the planter works. I've got some soil here and I've got a pepper that I never got to use actually from my garden and you all can grow your own also. And I'm going to go ahead and use this knife because I'm not eating these peppers. I'm just going to go ahead and use the seeds. So I'm using this knife to cut it open and you've got seeds right in here. You can dry them before and that way when the seeds are dry you can plant them but I'm just going to go ahead and show you. Um, what it looks like using these seeds straight from here and you'll still get to have some peppers growing. So I'm going to go ahead and get some soil and put it inside of the first container. Fill it up, not all the way to the top, you want to leave a little bit of room but you want it to be mostly full and then you can grab your seeds. And with pepper seeds, you just kind of sprinkle them around. Don't put too many in one spot. You could just sprinkle them. Then you're going to throw some soil right over top of that. Get that. So we've got our first planter, which we will be watering. Now you can just put this one right over top of the other one and grab some more soil, put it inside. I've got some more over here. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of room up top so that I could put the seeds, sprinkling them. And you can grow whatever you would like, obviously. You can get seeds almost anywhere and from foods that you already have. I'm going to put some soil up top over the seeds. And now I've got my second tier and now my third tier. Soil up over top. Grab some seeds. And then some more soil on top of those. Okay. 
And now I've got my three-tier planter, which you can go ahead and water right away. Thank you everyone for participating. I hope you all enjoyed it and that you get to reap the benefits and see a beautiful planter in your home and even get to see some plants and herbs and seeds coming from it. Um, tune in to the at Arsh Center and the Adrian Arsh Center. Thank you for joining the art of making and we hope to see you all soon. There's a variety of courses for you to choose from. Thank you for tuning in to Sherry Vice. You can check out me on my website at sherryvice.com and on Instagram at sherryviceart. And remember, our center at our center, Adrian Arch Center, the art of making. See you again next time. Bye.